In my last challenge, we beat the game with only commons, taking advantage of their similarities to other, more powerful Pokemon. More importantly, we also maintain access to some of the format's strongest trainers. So, what happens if we ditch those and look at only uncommons? Of the 198 cards in the base fossil era, 51 of them are uncommon Pokemon. However, many of these evolve from commons, preventing us from ever accessing them. Removing those leaves just 15 options, including nearly useless cards like Dratini and Haunter. On the trainer side, we have Professor Oak, but time will tell how many copies we're able to use. Players can infinitely grind, but I'm self-imposing a rule against it. During my common only run, I never pulled a single bill. Because these cards are more powerful, card availability is my main concern, which makes the Charming Iron Friends deck the best option. All decks come with the 1-1 Dugong line. Picking Bulbasaur gives us just Jinx. Squirtle gives us a 1-1 Arcanine, a second Seal, and a Magmar. While Charmander gives us everything the Squirtle deck does, plus an extra Growlithe. We get rid of the cards we're not allowed to use, and head off to the Grass Club. Due to our limited pool of basics, we struggle to beat Kristen's Lickitung. I eventually give up and go to other trainers to build my collection. When we head back, a lucky Magmar start cleans house. The club leader, Nikki, also goes down in flames. The prize packs give us a full playset of Magmar, which is a great card, but slightly disappointing as we've just cleared the club weak to it. Clearing this thorn opens the floodgates, with Rick from the Science Club getting swept by a single Arcanine. The fire club leader, Ken, can't handle the heat from Magmar and Arcanine, and the lightning club sees yet another Arcanine sweep. Our reliance on fire Pokemon means I skipped the Water Club, but we've already blazed through half the medals. Let me know whether you prefer this faster pace or the more detailed match explanations from the Commons Only Challenge. The Psychic Club is the first chance that our Dugong gets to shine, but Mr. Mime's Pokemon power forces us to swap back and forth with Magmar to deal any damage. This is more of an annoyance than a threat though, and we finish the game without Murray taking a single prize card. Jean mounts a rock-solid defense using two copies of Graveler to bring us down to a last prize situation. To take the final KO against Onyx, I drop a plus power before using Professor Oak to find the fire energy I need to use Arcanine's takedown. Players might notice that Arcanine deals 40 damage to itself in recoil. The text of plus power in the game actually differs from the text of the card in base set. The base set version is one of the many mistranslations done by the team at Wizards of the Coast. Beating Jean gives us Tauros, and having an extra colorless attacker is a blessing as we finally dare to challenge the Water Club. Our first attempt goes horribly due to coin flips on Smoke Green and Paralysis on Bubble, but the next attempt goes much better, with Jinx dodging an important confusion roll to pick up the first KO with Meditate. Full Heal lets us push through Paralysis, and Farfetch goes ham on several Goldeen before a second copy eventually takes out Horsey for game. We bring the same deck to the Fighting Club as they all have a Psychic Weakness, and Ghastly's Fighting Resistance makes it nearly impossible for them to deal damage in return. It takes several KOs at the start of the game, but we power up Jinx on the bench, which comes in and scores a few quick one-hit KOs to wrap up the medals. Much like last time, Courtney poses a threat, defeating us multiple times. In our winning run, we open Farfetch but focus on powering up the bench instead. By the time it faints, we have a 4 energy Arcanine ready to start cleaning up. An unfortunate smokescreen causes Arcanine to get revenge KO'd by Growlithe. However, our Magmar puts in some pressure and Courtney eventually runs out of energy, allowing our Taurus to sweep with Rampage, dodging all three confusion rolls. We open Magmar against Steve, stalling with smokescreen until Taurus comes in for KOs. Steve is low on energy, so when Zapdos comes out, I get aggressive with my Arcanine, and after it finally goes down to Electrode, Magmar cleans it up, and Tauros finishes the game. We take out the fire cards against Jack, but our psychic types struggle to damage Ditto. We whittle it down with Seal before taking the first KO, and Jinx gets Articuno down to just 10 HP before going down itself, letting Ghastly pick up a KO. Dugan takes out the second Articuno right away, thanks to poor flips on Blizzard, and then finishes out the game by KOing Lapras and an opposing Dugong. Bot is a joke of a penultimate boss and loses 6-0 to a single Arcanine despite having cards like Lapras to hit for weakness, and Ronald doesn't fare much better. Magmar takes out Dratini, and our second copy KOs an Eevee. We eventually find enough water energy to power up Dugong, and then the Aurora beams its way through multiple prize cards while a second Dugong is powered up on the bench to finish the run. 
Ronald is not a difficult trainer, and the struggle we had in the commons only run is the exception, rather than the rule. Apart from that, this run did share several of the same bottlenecks as the common only run, including Amy and Courtney. Even so, this one was a bit easier thanks to our ability to regularly hit 50 damage, rather than having a hard cap of 30. I am considering new challenges, other games to run, and other TCG content, so let me know in the comments what you'd like to see more of.